Welcome. In this short video, I'm going to guide you through the proper troubleshooting procedure for a faulty gas valve in a gas furnace. We're going to begin by clicking the thermostat icon down here at the bottom right of the page. This takes us right to the thermostat. Once here, we can click the system selector switch to the heat position. This will also turn up the temperature setting on the thermostat. Now you can use the procedure guide over here on the top left, which will walk you through each step in the troubleshooting process. Our next step is to go to the furnace and see what's running. While we can hear some noise, it's going to be necessary to remove the cover from the furnace to see which electrical loads are in fact operational. I would suggest turning the power off before you do this. Remove the cover from the furnace by clicking on it. Next, we're going to have to tape in the door switch. The door switch is located right here in the bottom of the furnace, just above the IFC. The door switch opens and breaks power to the unit when the door is removed and is an important safety feature. So we're going to click on this and tape the switch in. Now we can restore power and we want to be observant here. And if we look around, we can see that the inducer is running up here. And if we look down here, the igniter is also glowing. Okay, That indicates that not only did the inducer come on on a call from the thermostat, but the pressure switch over here on the right closed its contacts. If the pressure switch did not sense safe airflow, no power would have been sent to the igniter. So this verifies that our airflow is good and the igniter is glowing, but for some reason we're not getting any ignition. Now, if you go over to the troubleshooting procedure guide, we can skip quite a few of these steps. We don't need to check for power to the unit because the inducer is already running. We don't need to check power from the thermostat or the transformer. Again, the inducer is running. The pressure switch we know is closed because the igniter is glowing. So if we go to step eight here, yeah, the igniter does glow and then it shuts off because the flame is not proven. Our next step is to the burner's light. Well, we saw that. Now, if you want to cycle the unit back on and off, just simply turn the service switch off and then turn it back on and we'll be able to see the sequence here. And again, there's the inducer. Here's our igniter down here, but no burner operation. So we're going to click no here. Now, we want to check the supply pressure on the gas valve. Any pressure below five inches of water column indicates insufficient gas pressure on the main side of the gas valve. However, in this case here, I'm going to do an electrical check first. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the multimeter from the toolbox. We're going to click it to AC volts. And we're going to measure voltage at the gas valve connections to see if the gas valve is in fact receiving 24 volts from the IFC. If necessary, click on this tab up here on the top right. And we have a convenient wiring diagram here, which you can zoom in on. And if you look at the gas valve right here, we can see we've got a blue and a red wire that go to a wiring harness and end up down at the IFC. So we've got one of two problems here. Either the IFC is not sending 24 volts to the gas valve or the IFC is sending 24 volts to the gas valve and the gas valve coil is open. So let's click on the meter leads and place them across the glowing hotspots at the gas valve connections. And if we look here, we have 24 volts here. This indicates the gas valve is receiving 24 volts, but is not opening. Now this indicates a faulty gas valve. An additional check that could be made here would be to turn the power off, remove one of the connections from the gas valve, and do a resistance check of the gas valve coil. I recommend this test after verifying with voltage. So we're going to store the meter lead away and we're going to click on the gas valve to replace it. Click replace. $260 is the cost. We're going to proceed. And we've solved the problem. We're going to store the wiring diagram back away as well as the procedure guide. Our next step is to ensure that we clean the work area and put everything back the way we found it. Begin by removing the tape from the door switch down here. 
click remove tape. Next we can replace the cover by clicking on it. Last but not least we can reestablish power to the unit and in the corner we have a broom here which allows us to clean the work area. Click the broom for your fifth star. Good luck! Hey it is Craig with Interplay Learning. We hope you enjoyed this last video. The easiest way to keep up with all of our latest videos is by subscribing to our page right here. Just to let you know, if you're interested to learn how simulations are critical to onboarding and improving you or your employees' performance in the field, please visit us at interplay-learning.com.